Thanks for joining me, I'm T-Pain, and welcome to another Let's Learn Python Basics. Please feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right side to jump ahead to any specific section you want to focus on. Today I'll be using Python 2.7.4, and you can download it from python.org slash get it. So without any further ado, let's open up idle. So today's focus is going to be functions in Python, and this will build heavily on the past lessons, so feel free to go back and watch them again if anything is unclear by clicking on the right side. Alright, so functions, what are they? Uh, functions are a way to combine many actions into a single process. And so it's ideal for uh, situations where you're going to be using it over and over and over again. So the last video I referred to loops as a way of repeating a certain action over and over, like washing dishes. Um, functions would be a collection of actions, such as uh, cleaning a kitchen. And that includes doing dishes, sweeping, mopping, denoming under the sink, whatever it may be. And that's a Harry Potter reference for any of you who got it. <laughs> so how do functions work? All right, let's type this in, and I'll walk you through it step by step. So first we're going to type in DEF. Um, and DEF is a way of saying, hey, I'm going to be declaring a function. And you can name the function whatever you like. So we're going to name it um, does nothing. So following that, you're going to punch in a set of parentheses. And ordinarily, you're going to put in arguments in here, but for right now, we're just going to stick with it being empty. Finally, end it with a colon and press enter. And now, notice that idle automatically indents, um, anticipating you to put some stuff in to the function. And here we can put in whatever we want um, to execute over and over again. So for right now, just type in pass. And if you remember from earlier, pass is more of a placeholder. It doesn't actually do anything. It just tells the computer to move on. Okay, and press enter, enter again, and now the computer's accepted it. All right, so to test this out, just type in does nothing, open close parentheses, enter, and it accepted it. Great, so we've actually created our very first function. Excellent. Now the power of functions really comes from when you try to get something back from a function. This is where return comes in. Return is a way to return something back from a function. It's a form of output. Um, arguments are used for input into functions and return is used for output. So let's try another example. We're going to type def space lowercase make uppercase one open close parentheses colon enter return one enter enter all right so it's accepted it now we're going to type x equals make one the function that we just created enter and now type print x enter and now it's one perfect so now we've got a way to return or output from a function excellent so how do we push stuff into a function that is with arguments Arguments are a way of passing information into a function within the parentheses. It's a form of input. And so arguments are a way of inputting into a function the same way you put gas into a car. And the output from the function is the same as the car driving around until it hits 88 miles per hour and travels through time. And so there's two types of arguments. There's regular arguments and keyword arguments. Regular arguments are any basic input that you want to pass into the class. They could be class instances, numbers, strings, variables, lists, dictionaries, etc. Keyword arguments, however, are arguments that have an equal sign um, that's declaring a variable within the arguments that's going to be used later. It's a way of setting a default so that the user doesn't necessarily have to put it in. However, if the user chooses to put in uh, an argument into that spot, then it will be overridden. All right, so let's try a third example in which we start to use arguments. We're going to type in def space add capital T for 10 and then uh, my int in, per in the parentheses colon enter my int plus equals 10 enter and then we're going to return my int enter enter. Now we're going to go ahead and declare a variable that we're going to use to pass it into the arguments. We're going to type in x equals 12. Enter. And now to see what arguments and uh, functions that we actually have created, we can use a special function um, 
by typing in dir open close parentheses enter and here we'll see all the functions and variables that are stored within our file right now this is an extremely useful command that uh, we'll be using more later but it's an, a way to quickly uh, get see exactly what we've created and you can see the make one function that we created earlier the uh, variable x we have created and then the function uh, add 10 in here so it's a way of double checking that we have our functions and uh, variables stored in memory all right so next we're going to type in y equals add 10 open parentheses x close parentheses enter and finally we're going to type in print x comma y enter and now notice that the value for x is 12 however the value of y is 22 why is this we passed x into the function arguments why didn't the value hold as plus 10 or 22 like y did you'd think that they would both be the same value and this brings me to my next big point local versus global variables so up here in our def add 10 function that we created um, notice that we put in the my int is a way of passing in a given variable and then we added 10 and then returned it what happens is the function is actually creating a copy of whatever is passed in it's not actually adjusting the one we passed in only making a copy I need to emphasize this it's just a copy that will be deleted at the end of the function took me a while to wrap my head around it so I don't expect you to get this the first time around if you do you're genius so you may be asking yourself, well, what if I wanted to adjust variables within a function? How would I do that? What you'd use are globals. I'm not going to get into that now, but I will discuss it in a later tutorial. So next we're going to discuss comments and documenting. And these are the most important, non-essential parts of programming. In other words, your code will work fine without it, but it will make your life hell if it's not there. So way to think of this is if you're given code, um, you, you can think of it as being given a cell phone and the comments are like the manual of the phone and without the comments or documentation you may not be able to figure out how this new code or new phone works so they're important to have so the way that this ties back into functions is that you've got the document string which you can think of as the cover of the manual and the comments you create within the code are like pages within the manual okay so the document string what is it Alright, so the document string is a way of creating a short description for your function that can be accessed from anywhere. It comes immediately after your definition of the function, but before any of the actual code. And the way you contain it is with triple quotes on either side of the text. Comments, on the other hand, are notes that are completely ignored by the computer when it's doing its computing. It's a way to leave a message for other programmers or for yourself down the road. It is also a way to comment out broken code. I need to emphasize this. Whenever your code breaks, commenting it out is a great way of debugging. The way of creating a comment is you simply start with a pound sign or a sharp sign uh, at the beginning of the statement and then you just, from then on, it's ignored. So you can attach this at the end of a line, at, right before a line or after a line, whatever you choose. All right, so let's go ahead and see an example of both of these in action. We're gonna type in def my funk open clothes parentheses colon enter and then type three single quotes one two three enter tab and then we're going to type in whatever we want and I'm going to type in I documented something period enter and then I'm going to type three more single quotes enter and I'm going to type a pound sign now and type only seen in code view comma comp ignores enter finally we're gonna end it this function with pass p-a-s-s -S, enter enter and now Python's accepted it so now we're gonna type in a special command that will allow us to see the document string so type in print my funk dot underscore underscore doc underscore underscore enter and now we can access the document 
for that specific function we created. And it says, I documented something. Cool. All right, that's it for this lesson. Thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up today. Definitely take a few minutes to investigate these final examples as they really have thought-provoking concepts within them. They may have some stuff that I did not cover, um, so I encourage you to look them up at your leisure. Please leave me a comment below if uh, this helped you in any way. Also, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. And thank you so much for your support and keep the dream alive. <laughs>